Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. This is Anita Finley, and you are listening, of course, to the Boomer, uh, Boomer Radio, and we have our special guest, Kim Levito. Kim has been on our radio show many, many times because she is so filled with information about what's happening at the Bowling Center, and we want everyone to know about it. We want you to go there. We want you to volunteer. But, Kim, tell us. Now, we're having a very different kind of a conversation today. Mm-hmm. Um, what is going on, in, in, I guess, in your life and as in the life of the Volan Center? So, at the Volan Center, currently all programs other than meals and case management are temporarily closed. We will be reopening the adult daycare program mid-May, I'm thinking May 18th, uh, for limited capacity for those who absolutely uh, need our care. Um, At the Volan Center, uh, all of the program assistants which work in daycare are now delivering meals. I believe we delivered about 4,000 meals last week alone. So all of our buses are on the road. We get in there early in the morning. We um, get the meals delivered. Then we pack them up. Uh, Transportation uh, figures out the routes, and off they go, and they're out for hours. And then, of course, case management for those who need home care or emergency food. Um, Everyone's functioning, you know, full capacity right now. Wow, that's – I can't – 4,000 in one week? Correct. That is for individual lunch, dinner. How does that work? This is lunch or dinner. It depends on how they want to eat it, but it's a meal. Um, we send them out every day tomorrow, actually. And, um, every week, uh, we're starting with once a week, we have restaurant quality, uh, food. I can't say the restaurant, but it is restaurant quality food that is um, being delivered in refrigerated trucks tomorrow to our site. We do have mm. people who are um, going to receive seven meals. It's really 14. It's it's 14 breakfasts because they have um, like oatmeal and, and cereals and milk for breakfast. And then there's f- seven cooked meals that's chilled. You can either freeze them or reheat them. It's good for seven days, and we're delivering some of those to people who absolutely cannot come pick them up. If they're going to drive through and pick them up, um, we just they just pop their trunk and we drop them in the back, and off they go. Oh, I am just so thrilled that you all are there. I mean, just think for one second, Kim, if you didn't exist, what would they do, Kim? It, it, it's 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 for me scary sometimes because we do phone calls every week to we do reassurance phone calls of course to see how everyone is sometimes we get uh someone we know it's always it it brings tears to my eyes when I call someone a caregiver to see how they're doing and then you know the the client you want to talk to Kim and they get on and they miss us and you know they're they're isolated and it's it's not a great place to be but they're safe um, and, and we find out that, you know, we, we couldn't get out to get food or we, we can't make the food. So we get them in the program and we get them food. Oh my heavens. And that, and you think about that. Yeah. They do have television at home, hopefully many of them, but mm-hmm. there is a certain loneliness. You know, this is actually happen, happening in the senior living communities. You know that, that mm-hmm. people who are there aren't even allowed out of their rooms. And their meal is being brought to them at the door and left there for them to get. It's it's very sad because isolation and loneliness causes significant decline in cognition. And I am hearing this. And that was one of the reasons why we decided we are going to, at a limited capacity, open the daycares. We are doing social distancing. We are doing no contact temperatures for all staff and all anyone who comes in the building. The adult daycares are closed to anyone other than staff and, of course, the participants. Um, every we, We're even removing chairs so there's not even an accident for someone to sit close to someone. Um, and, like I said, limited capacity. All right, so how are they getting going to get to the daycare center? Will you be bringing, picking them up in a 
ban? We Those who need to use our transportation, we will. Our uh, drivers, when we are loading clients, will also have no contact thermometers. Uh, CDC states that a temperature is a measured temperature over 100.4 degrees. We have decided to call it at 100. So no one can come in the center or ride our buses if they have a temp over 100 degrees. Now, people should know that you, of course, are so many things at the Bowen Center. Your official, uh, your official <laughs> title is that you are the director of the adult daycare center, but you actually are a nurse. I am. And so this really affects you even more than a typical staff member because you understand the seriousness of this. I do. I understand the serious in so many aspects, the seriousness of COVID-19 itself, you, uh, you know, the, the, the virus. But I also understand the seriousness of isolation and loneliness, um, lack of nutrition. It's, so it's, it's very all-consuming and scary. Have you ever been in your career, have you ever been involved in anything like this? Oh, nothing of this sort, no. Um, the, the, the fear that so many people have for good reason. Um, people who um, are hungry, who are caregivers who are stuck at home and can't go to work because they have no place to put their loved one and they're fearful for th their, their financial stability, they're fearful for, for the economy. There's so many different different aspects of this. Yes. I mean, I, I think all of us have a piece of what you've been talking about. Um, and so it's a, it is new. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is a new, a new time for all of us. We have not, um, we've not really grasped it, I think, as, much, as serious as it is. And, and it's only been, how long has this really been that we, a month? Have we been? We've, tied we've down been from? closed for a month. So I would say it's probably yeah. been about six weeks. And mm -hmm. in that six weeks, like when we're doing reassurance phone calls, I, the caregivers are saying, wow, you know, they're, they're really losing the memory and, and because they're isolated. And so there's, you have to make a choice. It's, it's a scary choice to make. And the caregivers, many of them, they don't even go to their home, do they? So they're so, alone. Some don't, some are alone. Uh, I would say those with that are, have significant cognitive decline do have someone in the home. But the someone in the home is probably trying to work from home and 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 trying to keep their loved one um, engaged and keep them in, into, involved in activities. It's, it's very difficult. Yeah, it, it is. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've never been involved in anything like this, and it's a, it, it is very scary. And even though you... You know, you, you have friends, you speak to friends, but I, when I go out, I wear a mask. Mm -hmm. I don't wear gloves if I'm just walking, but I have to walk my dog three times a day. Mm -hmm. But I, I have gotten my food delivered. I mean, you know, groceries delivered. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't go out because I do have a couple of things that I have to be very careful about. Right. And, and that is a choice that many people are making and then that leaves them isolated. Um, I, I, when I go out, I wear a mask. Um, I do not wear right. gloves, but I, I usually carry hand sanitizer with me. Very careful about hand washing. We encourage hand washing even among staff members. When we're in the building, we all generally wear a mask. If I'm in my office, I don't wear a mask because I'm by myself. Um, but you know, we're, we're all very careful in the Volan Center about um, being following our protocols. We're not even using the biometric time machine to, to clock in and out because, you know, you put, you put mm. your hand on the machine. So and mm -hmm. we're being very good about it. And, uh, you know, we're listening to the CDC and the officials and what's recommended for us, uh, for the county, and we'll take it as it goes. That's all right. we can do at this point. But we, we do have to keep feeding the people uh, of Palm Beach County that, that need food. Well, um, why don't you go back and talk about that restaurant situation? How did, did you, who organized that to happen? That was terrific. So the Area Agencies on Aging, or the um, Department of Elder Affairs, uh, organized um, restaurant-quality meals to be distributed. So if anyone is interested in that, um, the preference is for it to be picked up. And like I said, it's contactless. We'll just 
put it, it's packed up already. When we receive it for the restaurant quality meals, when we receive them, they're already packed. So they can just be set right in your trunk or right in your car and you can move on. Uh, it's much easier and quicker if you just do the drive through at the main Volan Center and pick up. Um, or if if you absolutely have to have it delivered, um, we can deliver it. But you have to do a, a short little assessment uh, about how much food you're getting. And you can just call the Volan Center and someone can do that quick assessment for you and get you on the list. It's usually about if you called today, it probably wouldn't be until the delivery next Thursday that it would begin um, but we will we'll be doing it weekly and as we get more people on the list who who would like that be to be part of that program we'll be doing it a couple more times a week also and well like, I want to I, I also would like to talk about we always talk about the bowling center because you're like the main hub mm -hmm. but uh, I'm very close to the brow to the uh, Boynton Beach Senior Center and I just wanted to see what was going on there. So I did go over. That was one of the few things that I did because I did have to go to the bank. And so I, I did that last week. And they had volunteers there with the Volan Center mm -hmm. on their sheet. And so tell us what the Volan Center also does with, with Senior Center. So the Volan Center does have what generally outside of a pandemic would be a congregate meal site where people can go and um, get a free breakfast and lunch. Uh, but now that we have the pandemic, all the congregate meal sites are closed. So um, the Boynton Beach Senior Center packs up food and you can drive by and pick it up. So the food's still there, the food's still available. Again, you just have to do call and let them know to reserve a spot. They'll do a little assessment, but they are there um, to also distribute meals. And where else do you do this? You do it at the Boynton Beach and you do it at other places? Pompeii Park, which is in Delray Beach. Uh, we have, of course, our 1515 site. Um, there is uh, Lakes of, or Delray Lakes, um, which is a smaller one, but it's the, they're South Palm Beach County. And of course, if we had enough people, because um, the Thursday meals or the restaurant quality meals, I believe that they would be able to do another distribution site if it need if need if it needed it. So you're saying that the restaurant that's doing this, and I know you're not saying who it is, and that's okay. But they actually have been um, they have been first they're purchasing it through the uh, area agency. So you don't have to do this now during this time, right? You you don't. Because that was very tough for you, wasn't it, before this? Well, we're still distributing the daily meals, um, which oh, are, you are. we are. We'll still be distributing. That does not change. We'll still be doing those. But once a week, we will do the 14. It's 14 meals. Like I said, it's seven sort of breakfast and seven um, cooked meals if for someone to come by and pick up should they want that to be able to do that because i know that sometimes um with the daily deliveries it's hard if someone has a doctor's appointment because they have to be there for the delivery we can't leave it outside the door um so they don't want somebody coming every day so if it's easy for them to pick up once a week and have seven you know days of meals um that may work out better for some but then but those with I, I, without transportation of course right can have so, it delivered. This is, this is really interesting, but let's say the pandemic, the, current, the coronavirus isn't on. You do this anyway. You just wouldn't have that restaurant um, providing meals, but you do this as part of the program, whether somebody is in the center or you deliver them, right? So d regular daily delivered meals, generally, no, we are a congregate meal site. So people, we can pick oh. someone up and bring them to our site because it's a congregate meal site. Um, I see. But case management for those who who are isolated at home, who can't get out for medical reasons or any other reason, um, through case management and, and through the area agency and Department of Elder Affairs, they do have programs where people can do home meals, where they do get frozen meals delivered. But that's going through assessments with the Department of Elder Affairs, Affairs and they can... Um, help um, people get those if they need them. But regularly, we are a congregate meal site where we will pick someone up and bring them to eat at our site. 
And the whole point of that is, as you were saying, Kim, uh, it's a socialization because that's what they're lacking now, which is the loneliness and, and being fearful. Um, I want everyone to know this marvelous woman. I mean, she, I, I don't have enough a- angelic words for her, but Kim Levito is the director of adult daycare at the Bowen Center in Boca Raton, and, and um, she is an RN, and she's, I think you ch- pretty much uh, run so many of the, the activities because you, I mean, you have people that are work with you or under you and all, but you really have such a big heart that you want to make sure everybody is taken care of properly. That comes through very, very clearly, Kim, when Thank you talk. You know that. Thank you. I, I, I uh, all everyone that comes in the center is in my heart. I, I just, I want everyone, <laughs> I, I want everyone to have a great quality of life. That's what it's about. So, you know, if they can, when, when the center opens up, we're going to have the Life Enrichment Program, which is the regular senior program for independent people to come in and enjoy all the new programs that we're going to put together. Also for congregate meals. Um, and then, like I said, with the daycare, these, these folks that have cognitive decline already need to have some stimulation. If you're not comfortable with being in a daycare setting, Make sure these people are getting stimulated at home, and it's not just sitting in front of a TV. And are you providing them with masks? I guess when they come we, in, you will. We will. I we will. Prov- all staff will have masks, and we will certainly encourage masks for clients. But th- those with significant decline, often it's difficult. Right. We don't want to confuse them. Uh-huh. We don't right. want to scare them. And then you have the right. communication issues with a mask over their face. If, if, if they can't communicate, yes. you can't see what's going on. But we yes. will social distance, like I said, temperature checks, symptom checks. So hand washing, even before we decided to close, the minute that a, a participant came through the door, we took them straight to the bathroom for hand washing. <laughs> so <laughs> we're following all the protocols and you know even some new ones. And as well as caregivers, we'll meet them at the door to take their their loved one Mm -hmm. and they they don't come in nobody comes in except those of us are here and i'm doing 10 hour shifts with staff to limit the amount of staff that is coming in and out of the building oh wow yeah Mm -hmm. that's that's it's really it's a big thing and i and actually we didn't talk about this but your staff i'm sure depressed too yeah when we decided um to reopen um at the middle of may the smiles on everyone's faces it was uh, it's as if we've been just walking aimlessly for the last month and like zombies yes like zombies and it was exciting it's it, it, it's we're all excited about it just to see right. people to for people to see us for people to have a good time and we were all sitting yesterday discussing you know what kind of activities we we're going to do and we said right we'll have a big ice cream social the first day we open. <laughs> right. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is really, this is an unusual thing. If Three months ago, if anyone told you there'd be something like this, you'd look at them like they were crazy, right? Yes, I, I, I probably <clears throat> would. But, you know, it, it's best to be safe. Uh, yes. Follow the protocols. Do what you feel is best for you. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll all get through this. Well, because we do have a lot of people listening to our show who are not, you know, are probably not maybe even as old as some of the people who come there, and they're all having their problems. They're homeschooling their children, mm-hmm. right? They're they're doing lots of things. So I think your advice is, is perfect. Is there anything else you can think of that people should know about this? I mean, you know, you talk about, and I'm just going to say this, people want to go over to the beach. Well, you go into the beach or you do something like this, I think you need to still separate yourself from everyone. Isn't that the biggest thing? Just keep six feet or more away? Certainly, certainly. Keep six feet or more. Um, Social distance. Wash your hands. Uh, If you're sick, stay home, of course. Uh, Wear your mask because it's required at this point in public. Um, Do what you feel comfortable. Stress decreases your immune system also. So, um, you know, d- d- do what you feel comfortable doing. Uh, if you want to stay home and you're uncomfortable going out, that's what you do. Uh, eventually, you know, um, 
people will be more accustomed to this. I, I don't feel it's going away. It's going to be something that we have right. to deal with. Um, right. If, I agree. If there's a vaccine and those who choose to get it, you know, hopefully it, it covers a good percent of people with immunity or some sort of immunity for some amount of time. Right. But we're going to have to learn how to deal with this. You know, I was very happy that I had had my pneumonia shot and my flu shot mm -hmm. before this all happened. <laughs> but I guess it really doesn't have an effect, does it? No. This is so different, isn't it? So very different. And, you know, it affects some people one way and some another way or some not at all. And so it's it's a mystery at this point, I think. And we'll find out more about it as there's more research. And maybe we'll, you know, find out you know, that it wasn't uh, as difficult to fix as it, w it seems to be at this point. And I hope that's the way it is, but uh, I'm well, cautiously optimistic. <laughs> good. Right. Well, I, I did have another question. So mm -hmm. let's say that you don't feel well. And so it said you stay humble. Don't you call your doctor? How, what do you do about this? Well, Tell people what they should do if they don't feel well. <clears throat> If you don't feel well, you call your doctor's office. Um, I feel uh, people are becoming afraid to get medical attention for things that they need medical attention for. Don't forget to get your regular uh, blood tests. If you know you have a concern with cholesterol and you're supposed to get a, a blood test, don't avoid the doctor's office or avoid what you're supposed to do just because of this. There's precautions you can take. You wear your mask, you make your appointment with your doctor. Um, even at the labs, if you have to go to a lab, they schedule appointments where they try to, they're going to limit uh, so the people in the building and they're going to make sure they exercise social distancing. Um, I've read a lot about people not going uh, for emergen to the emergency room because they're afraid when they probably needed to go to the emergency room. You yeah. can do telehealth. Um, from your doctor, they will schedule an appointment. Um, I've, uh, I'm, my father-in-law now is doing uh, quite a few telehealth appointments, and it's wonderful. Uh, you don't have to sit and wait in the office. You schedule the time. They call you. Um, although it's unfortunate that we have to do it this way, at least he's getting the uh, medical attention he needs. And and does. Is he on Zoom so the doctor can see him? How does the doctor yeah, they know? Yeah, they do it on FaceTime. And uh, if mm -hmm. he does need to come in, he schedules an appointment and he does go in. And he makes sure he gets his blood work. And uh, it's not something – your health is not something to mess around with. And unfortunately, because there, so many people are afraid to go out, they're, they're right. letting the other medical issues that they should be taking care of, um, mm. pushing it by the wayside, and they shouldn't do that. Right, so people who are on certain medications, they may better stay on those medications, Sorry. right? And they better they better eat what they're supposed to, and Correct. maybe getting rid of stress. There are some very funny YouTube's or funny shows on television. <laughs> that's, that's one of one of the doctors said to me, laugh, smile. That's what you have to do. You are so right. It's it, last night. Um, I have been having some issues sleeping, and my husband and I watched two hours. And laughed two hours of these funny videos and laughed for two straight hours. And I swear mm. last night was the first time I really slept uh, in a month. That's very good advice. That's true. I can get on some of them. Some of those old Jack Benny and all these old mm -hmm. things, I guess that's what you should do, shouldn't it? And YouTube, it has been terrific. I know we use them for our shout outs and all, I, right. all kinds of funny things that I find. But I think you bring up a very good point. We don't realize how what stress is and i know i take my blood pressure at least once a day because i have to do that for the doctor and i'm trying to keep you know myself as stressless as possible but it's not possible to do that totally right especially with all the news and every channel oh, you yeah. turn on and so huh. we try to avoid it and and but you still need your information so what do you do yeah right and the first thing i do is i put my my computer or my phone on and it's all all these things and then you become addicted to it you oh, do well, and, you know, and what's and, and next not, right you're waiting for what's exactly. next well the one thing that i think that you have that's really going for you is that the the personnel at the bowling center are almost like a family and you care about one another and when you're there and everyone's together even if you're wearing masks or whatever you're doing even if you don't have participants, 
you have each other, don't you? We do. We have a great camaraderie in, at the Volan Center. We're all working together. Um, if if somebody's, let's say, in the weeds, we'll help them out. You, you know, um, because we're doing so many meals now, it's not just the, the kitchen people that are in the kitchen. Um, I'll go throw a hairnet and my mask and my gloves and my apron on and go do meals if I have to do it. Yeah. That's what we right. do. We all work together. No, I know. It's been, it's, it's really one of the best institutions. I mean, I, I have to say that, you know, what I think about the Bowen Center, I can't yes. say enough about it. And I, and I, and I really mean it. I just think that, you know, and I've been to a lot of centers and everyone tries to do good, but once you go to the Bowen Center, uh, it's a model for all senior centers to see. But it's not the bricks and mortar, although it's a beautiful building. It's really the people there who are who love the participants. They love one another. Mm-hmm. They're doing what they're supposed to do. It's. Um, I would think that other senior centers ought to come and you ought to do training <laughs> for other senior center uh, people. I'm game for that. <laughs> <laughs> because you can see, actually, right? There is a big difference where, oh. where you all are. Oh yes, we we have such a connection with our with our clients, with with the people that come into the center. I mean, and even those that come into the active senior center for congregate meals, they want to help out in the daycare, and I have them do, you know, um, men's club and women's club and um, social yeah. hours. You know, when we're open. <laughs> So everyone gets involved, right? And we love, uh, and we can't, we can't ask enough for people to volunteer. No, please, please, please volunteer. You will be so thrilled. You'll be doing such a good job. And I'm going to tell you, just go on their website, which is VolanCenter.com. Please, please, please go and and just volunteer. You, it will be the best day in your life. And Kim, sorry that you came in and I'm on the, the phone, but. You're such a good person. I, I thank have to you. Say a bouquet of flowers for doing that. <laughs> thank you. I, you, thank you know you, I love coming here. So I'll, I'll we'll know. see each other in person soon enough. Oh, absolutely. Or we'll zoom it or something, right? That sounds great. Okay, honey. Thank you so much again. All right, Anita. Have All a right. good one. Oh, you too, honey. Bye. Bye bye.